do some stuff today. This is going to start with lighting for the solar system. Um, I had a bunch of stuff that used to be hooked up that will probably just work. Eventually, after I figure this stuff out. I guess first I just really play with the light. Uh, the only problem is that now everything is generated at runtime. It's actually <laughs> kind of difficult to work with the light settings. Maybe I can just hmm. How do I want to work? Make this work. Okay, sure, so event graph. This is our constructor stuff, or not constructor, but construction. Clean this up a bit, bring it in. So let's just start fresh. Let's start fresh here. Um, this stuff. This would make the directional light from the star always face the player. That's one piece of it. It should. From the origin, yeah, that's fine. Then I need to set up the light parameters over here.
Okay. <clears throat> Need this node, this node, this node. Let's start by making this in hidden in game. I want to deal only with the Scene route for attenuation radius. This should work. Set intensity. Figure these out. And this guy. Save this guy for later. Um, set light color. This guy. Perfect. Uh, and actually, we should do like a water white. See what happens. Fuck it. And set attenuation radius. And then finally go over here and make sure that we're not using fall off. like non-interactive is this just like not a way that I can do my light because if so this actually doesn't work it's the biggest number I can make So let's try that. Huh. Uh, 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 uh. I can do it like this, which is excellent because a radial light is way better for what I'm trying to do. I just didn't have the attenuation radius big enough. About a hundred light intensity. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that looks good. We fly around it, we stay lit. Turn away from it, or bottom lit. It's still too bright, but it is working.
I think the attenuation radius should be something like Twenty million, rather than a billion. And then you don't need any of this, and you don't need this. Try ten. Let's also try to one hundred percent of A when alpha zero. Okay, so like point two. Try that. I want some tint. Yeah, that's blue light. I'm still catching it on my ship and it looks better. So I jump around until I hit another star of a different color. Let's see what it looks like. star this time and it's the right color Okay, this is really actually fucking sweet because
Okay, now it's too bright. here and let's Result. Let's do this too. Times. pins thousands of it's a multiplier effect here oh. I need I might need to get the relative scale Are they all going to be 50? 
I guess I need to find at least one system, one other system with a star in it. So I'm on the wrong capture. Oops. Well, damn. Why did it... Jesus. I do think I need to blur my color maps a little bit. Maybe. I don't want to overwrite them, but I will add four copies of the blurred ones so that I can use those. For the foreground nebula, that is. Me a star. There's one. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. 20,000. It's obviously way too bright. 20,000. So let's just say it seems like I could do... Just ignore this. Change this to like 50,000 and make this brighter. Maybe like not quite that bright. Hmm. This is not going to be useful. a good way anymore to set my starting location. <laughs> I have to figure that out. So I do need some ambient light. Wait, wait. Attenuation radius isn't big enough. Um, wow, I thought 20 million would be enough, but I guess not. About 2 billion. 200 million, actually, in another order of magnitude.
20 million too small, 200 million too big. I do want to see some fade. I want to, I, it should be like. for me to like floor it can I Should get dimmer as I get further and further away from it. And then it finally cuts off about here. And it's still too far away. Um, I mean too close. But it's a lot better. Uh, it's getting closer. So we said this is, what, 100 million? I feel like this is close. It's gonna start disappearing now, fade out over a little while. Okay, I can work with that. 150 million. Million is a good attenuation radius. Um, this seems to work okay. This will need to be tweaked. This is fine. Then on the event tick, 
We want to set the starlight to look at the player. We're going to make this visible again. And we want to, let's see. See what happens. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a bit much. A bit too much. Can I get
was doing. It doesn't really feel like it's doing anything to me. my star attenuation this is only two million it's not really good enough um does. Turn this up. Now what happens if I do this? I just wanted to see if it was cloaking anything. And I don't think it is. So can I bring this up a little bit?
Okay. I know how to control that. I'm going to bring this down. like one it fucking kills it uh, this might just be the straight up wrong variable for me to be fucking with Three, it showed right for sure yeah so let's start with three and let's see what we can get by working with this number The D light also not tracking the camera, but let's go ahead and um source system. Turn you off for a moment. Okay. So the let's get the point light working properly. Point light is visible. Okay, so without the, without the distance light, it doesn't work. Which is a shame.
let's now turn you off. Turn you on. a little better. It's fucking up the sky map though. If I go to one without a star, does it fuck it up? Yeah. Is that the fog? Probably the fog fucking it up, right? May have fog, it's just not the way. Ugh. I can't believe that. Nobody has figured out the answer to this, surely. So let's start here.
guess you could set this. Alright, so I need an occluder, and I know the perfect one to build. Um, No. What? I saw a tutorial on this the other day and it was cool. Hey guys, I am here showing off how to make a fairly simple black hole effect. Uh, especially the effect where it looks like the light is bending around it. I found that extremely difficult to figure out. Uh, the effect is actually fairly simple though. Uh, it, I, I made it with two sphere models, or one inside the other, and by creating just two very simple materials. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and go to a separate folder, and I'm going to start with the inner material. The inner limitations, which you should be aware about in the case you're interested in purchasing the asset pack. In order to create the black hole, simply drag and drop the blueprint in the scene, set the material to an opaque static material instance, and scale it up to whatever size you desire. If you have a static faraway skybox and you don't expect to have any interaction with the black hole, the setup is already complete. Make sure that your skybox matches the one in the black hole material. God, to make the material compatible sick. with your skybox, go into the material instance and edit the skybox image. If you're using the space skybox library system for skybox materials, 
the black hole has an inbuilt system compatible with it. Check the space skybox library system box in the material instance and match every parameter of the black hole skybox section with the ones of the skybox material. All right, sure, but that one's going to be material and the outer material are actually buy very, very similar. They both use pretty much the same exact nodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and type in Fresnel. If I can learn how to spell. Bring that in. And I'm going to get a constant. So if I hold the one key and then left click, it'll bring in a constant. And then I'm going to drag that into the exponent in. And I'm going to set the value of that over here to the left to 2.5. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and invert it. And to do that, uh, I hold the O key and then press left click on that. Sorry about that notification. This is useful. Stop. Now, a good way to remember this, at least for me, is to remember opposite and then it'll flip it when you plug that in. Now I'm going to take the result of the inverse, the 1 minus x, and I'm going to plug that into a power node and take it to the power of 10 over here. Now what, that, what that's going to do is if I start previewing this node, it's going to make the edges softer mm -hmm. here. So this is essentially taking what the Fresnel node does and making the edges really visible. And this is inverting that and making the center. OK. So I'm going to stop previewing that. And I'm going to multiply this by 2. just to make sure that the color, uh, that the light comes out well. And then I am going to plug that into opacity. Now it's not highlighted right now because I haven't set the material blend mode to translucent. So I'm going to do that now. And if you, if you scroll down, I'm going to set it to unlit because this material will never need to be lit. I'm going to drag that over here just to keep it a bit cleaner and closer to the result. Now you'll notice over here that it is indeed working and it does have a fuzzy effect. Now what I did, just because I thought it looked too uniform on the edges, is I pulled in a texture sample and that texture sample I used was just a normal map for the black hole. And then I took that, flattened it, so it didn't have nearly as much of an effect. And I brought out a constant and set it to a value of like 0.876. And then I take, took the result of the flattened normal and I plugged that into the base reflect fraction in of the Fresnel node.
right, so this is actually like... Three materials, right? Reference image. I'm going to shrink this. when I increase it beyond the bounds. How is this possible? I think what I'm starting to realize is that I need Why do that? I just wanted to call and see how you guys are doing. Do you think? Anyway, we love you. Talk to you. Marked for deletion. New message. Hey, Sam. This is Bob. I'm a dad. Um, we just wanted to touch base with you um, to see how Charlie was doing. Message marked for deletion. New message. Hi, Sam. I'm going to call. Message marked for deletion. New message. Hey, Sam. This is Bob. We've been trying to call you. Called you on your birthday. Was... Message marked for deletion. New message. My name is Karen Martin. This is a notification call from our Department of Tax Debt and Financial Settlement Services. 
There are new programs that can help you reduce or eliminate your debt. Message marked for deletion. There are no more messages. Okay, so This is going to go into. Just want to see if I, I understand like what the rest of this is going to be. Um, so basically you got to come up with a way to generate a random seed for a solar system and then you base that on position. So you deterministically figure out a seed from the position in the universe and then you branch out and randomize everything from there. Right now I'm just um, taking a little break to try and make a black hole texture. That's what I was looking for right there. Um, um eventually I'll do some C plus plus. I, I it's not like I can't. I just haven't found anything that I haven't been able to do with blueprints yet. I think the the biggest thing that I want to do for C++, honestly, is a 64-bit seeded random stream. Like, just go make my own random stream instead of using the built-in one because it's... Um, the built-in one is seeded on a 32-bit int, and that's caused me some problems because my, my universe space is a lot bigger than that. So basically, right now, every... 22 billion stars or so it'll start repeating something like that 
so like the biggest benefit to me would be to create a completely different um a completely different way to get a random number stream this is like the distortion field I taught myself I, I started learning it uh, four weeks ago I just picked it up and started learning it We're starting to get some good intense black hole light field distortion. Okay, okay so that's too much. <laughs> we found the upper bounds. Um well, okay, so to be fair, like I have a huge head start on somebody that is completely new because I've been a software dev for like 13 years. So like I'm really advanced in, in like my actual like coding skills. Uh, so I kind of like, I have like a head start to learn this shit, um, but the tips that I would have if you really want to learn um, is to just pick it up and start fucking with it because that's what I did and like after you fuck with it for a little bit you'll be like oh I see something that like maybe you'll get an idea of something you want to make something like that and then you can go just start trying to do it and um, just you know scour the internet for any examples cobble together anything that you think you can do like the thing for me is like i already had a pretty strong grasp on like the proc gen math for seeding a universe like procedural like for procedurally generating this stuff like i already had a, a grasp on those algorithms so it's just kind of figuring out how to do things in unreal um that i already knew could be done you know um all right so this is done uh, I can show you what I've got so far. So I have a little planet system, but I've disabled the planets for now because I've been working on the um, warping and galactic coordinates and star generation and things like that. Today I've been doing lighting uh, or some lighting work. So like if I start here, this is my zero zero. I do some magic uh, to procedurally generate these nebulas, and then I procedurally generate an accurate star field for the um, actual stars that exist in the universe. And then I snap all that to a cube map, which gives me my sky sphere for a given system. So like these stars are accurately positioned, and they all exist. Um, and here's the star that I'm currently around. And then I haven't fully implemented the warp transition yet but I've got the base in to just randomize um, where I go so if I hit this I will generate a random location within negative 250 million to 250 million in all direction in all axes and I will go to a new system and we see that this one also has a star they don't all have stars in fact that's why I'm building a black hole because I want to have like right now it's a 5% chance for one to have a star I want to have like a really, really small chance for it to have a black hole. Um, but so you can kind of see and, and basically a lot of what I'm doing here is uh, a bunch of complicated material functions with noise patterns to generate the nebulas and various colors being worked together at random ratios. And then the stars are actually accurate to the, um, the actual shape of the galaxy around you. Like they are positioned proportionally to their galactic coordinates. And I can just scroll through different places and eventually you get cool different. I mean, there's a lot of variation in the um, sky boxes. Like you get pretty much black sky boxes like this and you get sky boxes with a lot of pretty nebula in them. And all of this is deterministic, so if I ever go back to the same system, 
it will regenerate the same way. So like, uh, if I go back to, if I restart this and go back to zero, 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 um, it will always be this system. It will always generate the same sky sphere because it's actually like relative to the position of the galaxy. And if I start moving, this is all like behind load screen stuff, but if I can start moving while it's loading. You can see, like I'll start boosting. You can see that like basically so the way i do that is i spawn a niagara particle system with a particle that is placed at every stellar coordinate that's within a certain range of the player um of the system you're in and i generate that particle system but it's expensive so i um snap a cube map from the center of it and put it on the skybox and then I and then I destroy all the the shit that I used to make that cube map. Um, likewise, the nebulas are just a procedural texture that I built to generate nebulas. Um, there's some artifacts here because I'm working on the lighting. Uh, also, I, I spent a couple days doing the flight model for this ship. It has uh, like actual momentum and velocity data and you can see these little lights on the side of the ship when I do things, when I do. So those are accurately flagging which thrusters would fire to generate that vector of motion. So like if I go, if I pitch up, it's firing the nose, it's firing the one, uh, if I pitch down, it's firing the thruster above the nose and below the tail. If I pitch up, it's firing the one above the tail and below the nose. If I spin left, it's above the right wing and below the left wing, um, etc and all of them match with the input axes. Uh, so when I actually get around to building a more complicated ship than this placeholder with like actual engines and stuff, I can make the engines fire like correctly in order to orient the ship. Uh, that's pretty much it. Currently, I'm about to build a black hole right now. I just built the materials for it. So now I'm going to build the blueprint for it. And that should be relatively simple. Um, sphere 1 gets black hole enter. movement speed is way too fast. Why isn't that rendering? I'm confused why that's not working. Um, tips for learning C++. I mean, I'm not like a pro C++ developer or anything. I've done a bunch, I've done some C in the past. I like, the thing for me is like the programming languages just kind of come intrinsically because I've done so much coding that like they all start to look the same. So like for the C++, usually with coding, like I know what I need to do and I just have to figure out what to do with the syntax, which is pretty trivial. Um, I like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to tell somebody that uh, how to approach learning coding when it's something that I've picked up over, you know, like, at this point, 17 years of doing it. Um, the thing that I would say is that like, I wouldn't think about or look down on the idea of just working with blueprints to start because those are going to teach your brain how to, how coding works anyway. Cause like the blueprints are kind of similar to the mental picture you would hold uh, after planning a feature to code it anyway. Um, this like similar to like UML or something like that. Um, so to me, I think the conceptualization of what needs to occur is more important than the particular coding language you do it in because like Google can tell you how to do basically anything in any programming language as long as you know what the thing is you need to do, you know? Why is this the wrong color? All right, well, enter.
because like for me like even just like professionally i've been i've been had to do things like oh you know here's this project we need some work done on it quickly and you like we know you don't know this programming language like do you think you could do this and i'd be like sure and then you just go fucking figure it out you know like you figure out how what the difference in programming languages is as long as you understand how to put the logic together um my idea for a game so this started out um like i don't even care if this becomes a game or not to be honest this is just like a playground for me i it started out i wanted to generate a procedural planet from nanite meshes and i did that and then like that was the extent of my plans for this project when i started it i'm like okay well what if i make a star okay so i went and made a star and then i was like okay well what all of okay when i say i make something not just like can i make a star that looks good can I make a star that is procedurally generatable by randomized parameters? Like everything has to be at its root based on a randomized set of parameters. Um, so I made a star that was procedural. And then I was like, okay, can I do orbits? And I put the orbits together. And I was like, okay, I have a star and planets that orbit it. I need the ability to go between stars. So then I started working on galactic coordinates changed the way my seeds were generated to pull them from the galactic coordinate that the system spawns at. Um, then I started working on skyboxes because I just had a, a shitty skybox that I threw together in Spacescape, and I wanted to procedurally generate those too. So the, that's been my past week or so. I've been um, putting together the skybox you just saw where it spawns the nebula sphere, the randomized procedural texture, and then it spawns a particle system, and then it snaps a cube map of it. And applies it to the skybox. Um, that's what I've been kind of working on this last week. Uh, I would say yesterday, I, I feel like I got it done to the to a point where I was satisfied with it. And so, um, yesterday evening, I decided I would start working on level transitions. And I was expecting it to take me a really long time to figure out how to make it warp between systems, but it ended up being super easy, and it only took me like an hour. And so now I'm trying to work on, like when I was doing all that shit, I fucked up all the lighting in the scene. Um, so I'm working on restoring the lighting. I needed something, I needed an object to cast some volumetric shadows and I wanted to build this black hole tutorial that I saw. So I'm gonna build this black hole bl blueprint to use to just stick in my scene to cast volumetric shadows so that I can uh, get my lighting dialed in. And then at that point, I will start working on, um, let me see, I have my little plan document here. This is what's on my, my menu for today. Volumetric fog, scene lighting and star and starless screen scheme, scenes. A local star uh, brightness multiplier so that as you get further away, I make it brighter because uh, it's possible to get far enough away from it to where it kind of blends in to the sky sphere. And I don't want that to happen when you're in the system. Uh, I might start working on the galaxy map. Uh, I don't know. It's going to depend. And then eventually I'm going to make a little mini game for uh, while you're warping. Um, as far as like a game idea, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to procedurally generate a universe and go as far as I can. <laughs> I don't have any specific plan. I'm just like, oh, a black hole would be cool. Let's build one of those. Oh, you know, like a warp tunnel would be cool. Let's build one of those. You know, just like whatever I kind of want to do this is honestly more of an outlet for me to have fun with procedural math than it is like me intending to release this as a game or anything yeah well i i love i love love the math that goes into this kind of thing i love the idea of like taking an xyz coordinate in a universe scale changing that deterministically into a seed taking that seed to spawn out just like this huge fucking uh array of of parameters to initialize everything <sighs> to be fair like my planets are like the thing about star citizen is their planets look good but they're also not procedural um my planets don't look good but they are procedural <laughs> and i think my planets not looking good is a conjunction of sort of the way i'm doing it although i think you could get good like cartoony planets with with the way i have it but mainly it's my lack of blender skills <laughs> 
because the way I've generate planets, like you can't do tessellation with nanite or any kind of like procedural uh, alteration of the mesh with nanite stuff. It's all static. But I set out with the goal of making a nanite um, procedural planet. So what I do is I feed it like 10 little, or it's actually 11 possible little planetoids that represent biomes. And then I spawn them at different latitudes around a sphere. And it like comes together to form this kind of lumpy lumpy sphere of biomes and then you just put a water level on it and it um forms oceans on that little lumpy sphere and then you got a planet the problem is that my lumpy spheres that i'm using as building block were made by me in blender and i'm not <laughs> i'm not good at that <laughs> um all right so outer shell and core core needs to be like maybe half the scale of the outer shell and it needs to have and the shell needs to have the outer and the core needs to have the inner so I'll let's see what happens if I put this in the scene oh shit it's like well here's my player location so it should be in the scene ah it's so fast. Okay. Here we go. Black hole. Zero, zero. And our scales are really fucking huge here. Um, oh, what? There it is. And I don't have, I don't have, I also like, yes. Uh, the Like I said, the major thing that is tempting me to dip into C++ right now is the fact that the only random stream they use is a 32-bit int seeded. And uh, if I used a 64-bit int seed, then instead of repeating configurations every 22 billion iterations, it would just never repeat it. It would just never repeat configurations. And that's the, that's the only thing that I, I really want to do in C++ right now. And I haven't seen any way to do it in, um, I haven't seen any way to do it in Blueprint. The way I do it is, uh, the way I do it is kind of cheating. I made this class that generates my random seeds from XYZ coordinates. And um, basically I take the X, Y, and Z coordinates and I use each one of them to generate a seed and then each one generates a random int within this range. And then, so the X generates between zero and nine, 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 uh, six nines. And then the Y coordinate generates the same random number, but multiplies it by a million. So you can imagine, uh, you can imagine what's happening in the math there is if I rolled max, I would have nine, 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 nine on the first one. And then I would have nine 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 on the second one, and then the third one is multiplied by one followed by twelve zeros, so it would be nine 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 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve, and when you add all these together, you would end up with. So this is this is the range of seeds I can generate from my coordinate system. The problem is, is that int 32 max is like 22 billion, and obviously this is way above that, but but this fits inside an int 64, int 64. Um, so what I do is I make an int 64 out of that, and then I made this function because they didn't have a modulo function for int 64 to basically um, divide it by the integer max, right? then multiply it by the integer max and then minus it from itself, which returns me the remainder. Uh, and so 
it's like that gives me the ability to have a solar system that's 500 million across in all directions, 500 million galactic units or whatever you want to call it, and use the 32-bit um, randomization. But this is going to repeat every time. Like it will only like it'll go from like zero up to this. And then after you pass that, you would start moduloing again. So like the, this is, it's not truly random in, in that nine, 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 nine space, whatever the fuck it was. Um, so that's why I want a 64 bit seeded random stream. And that's what I would probably have to use C++ for. Cause I don't think there's anything like that in the, in the blueprints, but I can fake it for the moment. And then one day I'll crack open the engine and make a, make one. Okay, so my black hole didn't work as kind of expected. And also it's way too small. So like too small to work with here. The other problem I'm facing here <laughs> is that because I generate everything at runtime, the scene is just black and it makes it really hard to know where you're at. <laughs> because like nothing is generated like this, it's all like the way I'm doing this black hole is not the way it would eventually be done. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, like my approach to something like this when I'm learning something is like I just fucking cobble and steal from any kind of tutorials and guides I can see like anything I just like and it's not necessarily like how do I make a star it would be like I have this specific like how do I like it could be completely unrelated but like if I can find a piece in a different tutorial that matches something that I need to do then I'll pull that in too and um and eventually you just kind of know what's going on like Eventually, you just kind of start grasping the math and understanding like how it works. Uh, okay, let's try that. <laughs> so I don't know why I didn't apply my fucking textures. I'm a little bummed. It's supposed to... So if I just, question, if I just modeling sphere Maybe like 64. And I just stick that here. I stick another one right here. And I uh, go to wireframe because this is fucking useless in no light. And then I zero, zero. Make it a nice even number. Three million. It's going to live at three million on the x axis. Oh, shit. It was further away than I thought. Like what? Okay, it's way further away than I thought. Uh, this isn't right. There's no way that's 20,000. What the fuck? When all it fails, just kill it. Kill it. Make it again. Uh, player start. Copy. Paste. Perfect. So, so it didn't work when I tried to build it in a blueprint. So I'm just going to try to build it like in the scene and see if the effect I'm going for is there. 
I think it will be. You know, this is also the wrong kind of sphere. I didn't... There. too small. Everything is so fucking big, like 50 is nothing. Now we're talking. So like this outer one is a completely transparent, just refractive texture. So it needs to be really big. Yeah, I probably would be. Like there's all kinds of, so like there's all kinds of things I'm probably doing wrong. Oh yeah, there we go, it's starting to work. It doesn't refract enough though. I, like there's all kinds of workflow shit and stuff that I'm probably doing wrong. There's definitely stuff that I've done when I was first starting that I was like, oh, I could have done that way better um, later on, you know. But I don't really look at that as a bad thing. That's just kind of part of the learning process. Refraction needs to be like way, way higher on the texture. You would have thought this was enough. Or maybe I'm like too high and it's like clamping out at the top. Yeah, I definitely, there's definitely some, a test level is not a bad idea to like just whiteboard shit, you know? fraction. I think I may have exceeded like a threshold with the refraction and that's why it's not working. The way I want it to. I think I might have just had it too high to begin with. Let's try. Let's try going the different way. Go down to 20 from 40. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Oops. I always do that. Okay, well, it's not working exactly like I expected. So I think it's time for me to pick the tutorial I was looking at back up. Where did it go? Although this is optional and I have a Skype. No, not for. this. You eat five black hole. <clears throat> and this is what I do. I try I run into something, I I go till I hit something I can't figure out. And then I go lift something from somebody else. This can be done in Unreal Engine 4 as well, but I'm choosing to do it in Unreal Engine 5. This is really bad. This guy also wrote a thing on um <laughs> I've I followed a couple of this guy's videos. He wrote a thing on ship propulsion. But I re I wrote that myself from scratch, and I think mine's better. <laughs> Mine is actually like physics based, not just like input based. Like you have velocity and momentum. So a spaceship, a planet with atmosphere and rings, and the black hole itself, you can head over to uh, Gumroad or our station to, to get the project, or you can also go on Patreon, become a Patreon supporter, and you can have a project from there. But some of this guy's spaceians look fucking sick. That I have available. So for the price of a coffee, you will be getting a full-fledged black hole and a space in which you can actually use it. Um, so, uh, you know, on top of that, uh, you, you're basically learning as you, as you go through this as well. You'll be learning how to put together materials, how to put together um, a C++ code, which is also with a, it will be linked in the water copy in the description below of, of YouTube. So just make sure you get that because without it, you won't be able to run this to, uh, to make this uh, material. Uh, once you have that code, once you this this guy's got like the squarest hairline I've ever seen. Together, you will be able to have a fully functioning. Like it's like a perfect cube. And modify and get different results with. So let's not delay it any longer and let's begin breaking down my initial scene so we can understand how it all functions and uh, how we're going to put it together. Okay, guys, so. I mean, that looks fucking the, sick. Uh, black hole project. If I can do that. Uh, this is the black hole. As you can see, it is contained as a sphere in a blueprint. There's a planet over here as well. There's an, uh, uh, some rings around the planet with an atmosphere. If I press play, I will be able to fly a ship, as you're seeing right now, uh, which is the Millennium Black Millennium Falcon, uh, you know, flying towards the black hole. So I think that looks pretty cinematic, pretty nice. Um, okay, now the black hole itself is it is a blueprint, right? And we're gonna set it up that way, and I'm going to show you how you can. Yeah, no problem, man. All of these Anytime. I'm just here programming and coding and putting shit together. To change everything that you want about, about this black hole. Uh, one of the, the first setting is the black hole set, the size. It, by increasing this, you're effectively making the black hole itself and the aggregation disk. You're increasing its size or decreasing it. And this is a very large blueprint, as you can see. The scale of the blueprint is really high. And the black hole size, if you increase that too much, it will get out of bounds of the sphere and the black hole will not be able to go past those bounds. So we, we if you want to increase it even further, you have to increase the size of the of the sphere. So hmm. let's say we put it at the uh, size two, so now it's a massive sphere. So the black hole can just become gargantuan, as you can see. Well, it was already very, uh, very, very large uh, as it was, but um, that's what that setting does. The next one is a setting about color, so it just mm -hmm. changes. The this is exactly what I mean. Black hole again. We're going to uh, learn how to do this, so you can make all. Hell yeah! I'm gonna build color. this whole fucking tutorial so, uh, right here. This is sick. Pink is not exactly something that I want, but you know. How long is this okay, tutorial? Whatever folks are both. Uh, let me just try and make a bit of a red pin did like that. The next thing is the emission intensity, so that just uh, that just uh, increases the power of the 40 minutes? light emitted sure. by the black hole, and that's a really nice setting as well. 
Then you've got the ring speed, the, 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 yeah, the rotation speed of the... Oh my god, it's so sick. You can also stretch their textures, <laughs> so you can make them like a soup, or you can just uh, really decrease it and make it more like a grain. This so is fucking speed. perfect for what I want it for. Now as well. Uh, then you've got the Doppler intensity, and as you can see, the more you increase it, it creates this sort of shine where the hole meets the, the, uh, with the event horizon, basically. Sort of I bet by I'm doing this the, tutorial, I'll learn a bunch of shit that I can use on other stuff too. Pretty much increases the holes, the the, 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 the the size of the hole itself. If we go further down, you can see what I'm talking about, you know. And and this just is really nice. That you can just do that and have different size, shapes of black holes. And by the way, you can have multiple black holes within the scene. And as you can see, they're quite performant as well. I mean, I'm not really getting a lot of hits here. Hell yeah, dude! This is like sick. This. The next thing that we've got, and this effect, is the lensing, which will be part of the, if you look in the blue room, we've got an outer um, static mesh and a, and, a, and a black hole, and each of these are just some spheres, you can just use these spheres for that, but what we're doing here, if I pre press Alt 3 on the keyboard, this will allow us to see the, the entire thing unlit, so if I start changing these settings, you can see how it's affecting is distorting the area around the black hole but once you go into lit mode the black hole itself has not been distorted but you can see the space around it has it I'm not oh sure my god to to see this black hole, <laughs> so but cool. you can see how the shape of the space around the black hole distorts as we play around with the setting which i find really really awesome as well so i'm going to show you how to put all of that together again if you want to get the project files for this yeah, you, you've got everything no, bro, I want to make it. Up and running. You've got the, a ship with the mm -hmm. flight control. I want to make it from scratch. Let's go. You've got the planet uh, with rings and an atmosphere that you can just play around with. Um, and you can get it at, uh, you know, our station, Gumroad, or Patreon. If you want to support me for the price of a coffee, you're basically getting all of this. If not, just stick with the tutorial and you'll learn how to make this black hole yourself. So let's not waste any more time on, on you know, breaking down the scene. Now let's just begin. Now I want to just... Um, go in, into you know just make a new level i've got a default level in here and i'm just gonna play with my black hole within this level there's no point in, in going somewhere else uh let me just decrease the speed at which we're moving we're gonna have a you know fairly a, a small black hole uh the first thing we want to do is uh start working on the material okay i'm just gonna follow exactly the steps uh level empty level create Wait, he built a different default. Now I want to just um, go in into, you know, just make a new level, I've got a default level in here. And new level, basic, create, lit. four delete the four okay here we are now we are aligned i'm just gonna play with my black hole within this level there's no point in, in going somewhere else uh let me just decrease the speed at which we're moving we're gonna have a, you know fairly a, a small black hole uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, start working on the material itself so uh let me just i'm just gonna get a content route side and that is more and more you know for myself to be able to um to look in there for you know some 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 form of um, <coughs> guidance on on, on 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 this whole material uh, so i'm just going to right click and create a new material and then call this m uh black hole tutorial okay and then we're going to double click this material and let's bring it over here so we can have a look. The first thing that we'll need to do about this is to ensure that it is set to um, to lead the surface, set it to translucent, and make it unlit, and also to side, and that should give us the the right material. Translucent, unlit, two sided. Bam. Bam. this. 
Uh, the next thing you want to do, uh, one second, is you want to um, create the material, well, create the nodes by adding two multiply. So M on the keyboard, left click, and this will add two uh, multiplies within the uh, within the the node. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and then let me just I'm just moving around some some materials that I'm just going to help me to put all this together uh, in the multiply in this first multiply in here we want to plug this into the second one like that and in this one we want to keep the number three on the keyboard pressed and then left click this will add a node with a color connect that into the the a you know the a node the, the sort of the a uh, connected of the multiply and then change this color to something maybe like a blue or something like that you know that's the default color for our uh, black hole and we're going to convert this to a parameter and call it uh, black hole or more like a creation um, you know disk color something like that, that right? and then we can also set a group for it and we're going to name it i don't know if that's global spelled right. settings hold up i like correct spelling Accretion disk. Accretion disk. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. It's not spelled right. Okay, we're good. Right. No harm, no foul. Um, and then with that done, we can add an intensity here. So let's just keep S on the keyboard press and left click. This will add a scalar parameter. And we can call that emission intensity because we're plugging this into an emission anyway uh, and we'll just give it a value of I don't know maybe like one or something like that right and this goes into the emissive color over here uh, we can also keep a press on the keyboard and left click this will add an add node and then we can connect that over into our opacity okay um, and then the next thing we want to connect into this add node a uh, breakout float four components and we just want the alpha of that i'm just going to the a value here and then over here add in a vector pause a value length node and this one we want to take the v3 I gotta like go slower because I want to know what this stuff is actually doing. plug it into the add node and all why I don't I wish I understood what was going on here this is so plug it over into the multiply over okay add and multiply here like that as well okay with that done uh, we want to add the mask so just type in component map Make sure the RGB of all three of them are being masked, but leave the alpha unticked and then plug that into the vector three. We obviously get an error here because we need something to connect it to. And this is the point where a material that a special custom material is going to be needed. And I'm just going to bring the material to my original black hole. And what we've got here is we've got a uh, custom data uh, material. And this has, uh, this has a code, uh, a C++ code, which has been modified by me and other people to make it work and create this material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire code and put it into the YouTube description underneath. Uh, you'll find the link or it can be allowed as a description. I'll just put it in there. So you copy that entire code and you paste it into the material. I'll show you how to do that. But one thing you will have to do on, you, on your own is uh, add all of these parameters. So I'll show you how to do that first. Uh, and, but the first thing you want to do is Control C on this material, 
go into your black hole material. Uh, sorry, you, you can control, you can control C and control V. I can do that because I've got it. But you'll have to just look for custom. And that's it, that's it. just the custom, right? And what you do to this custom, you go in here, you can rename it to, you know, I'm just going to put example as a name. Uh, this is where the code needs to go. So you would take this code uh, that you can copy and then go into your example, delete that number one there and control V. And that adds the code within that. Uh, <laughs> the plot thickens. Now I understand what you use C++ for. Oh shit, that's insane. So you can write like little kernels to do whatever you want them to do. That's insane. That's actually insane. Um, so anything the game doesn't already do, you could do like this, probably. Okay. In this case, can also keep the, uh, and right now so that's t chord uh, for um the first thing you want to change the the output type to float four and then you want to start adding inputs now if you look at this material it's got 23 inputs uh, or 24 including zero so every one of these inputs when you go over here uh you press the plus button it will add a new input and then in that input, you can type in uh, the, the name of it. And it's very important that you type in the name exactly as you're seeing on the screen right now. So that's T chord, uh, for example, for the first one. And then the second one will be C pose, because you know each of these, uh, this is a texture coordinate, this is a camera position, this is uh, you know time and so on. Uh, and you want to add all of those. So uh, just make sure that whatever you do, you actually look at this code and you, you add all of these, but the code itself you can copy, right? After you do that, uh, you plug in the code, the black hole code. Okay, so where do I get this freaking... This is good. Where the fuck do I get the C++ though?
So now I'm stuck because I need the C++ card. What was it? What was his YouTube? So how do they do that? That's what I want to know. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this guy's channel again, actually. Oh, uh, the material is looking like. Okay, on. I need to... Like, and you can see it's very, very reminiscent of our um, sort of um, atmosphere can actually, you know, pretty much have this as an input, put, decrease it here to add, if I move, it will move with the camera, right? 
Now there is a solution to some of the to this problem in the material um, in the Niagara system. If you select sprite render, you do have a facing um, facing mode, which is generally to one of these options. But if you do put it as a custom facing vector, and if you have this sprite facing and alignment on, so added and actually on, you can select which way does the alignment of this always so right now it's one minus one zero you could put that to you know for example nine minus one Wh whatever you do it will just change the alignment and you've just got to play around with it but let's say you don't want to play around with these settings because they're not very you know you, you put it in whatever sort of you want it on the x you want it on the z value for example right so but actually right now it's a Welcome to Organians Photobox. In this tutorial, we'll be making a nebula in itself. Uh, so with the noise section over here, minute. But if you want to keep um, your sort of scene in view, this is what you can do. And then just make sure over here you switch over to um, shaded mode. Uh, sorry, to uh, uh, viewport shading. But this is an EV, by the way. So you know, there's no real problem with um, with you can keep it an EV with no real problem. Uh, you don't have to switch to cycles or anything like that, just leave it as EV. Okay, and over under this main viewport, we're going to switch over to a shader editor, and this is where we have our materials. Now, we're not going to use the surface at all because we're going to work with the volume um, part uh, of things. So, we're going to delete our principal BSDF uh, node, and we're going to start building the, the sort of the, the, the nodes for uh, driving um, this nebula. So a lot of this is revolving around noise textures. So I'm going to press Shift A on the keyboard and actually uh, bring a noise section within, within the scene. And we want to create the sort of the, the shape inside of the cube where you know our nebula has all these sort of gassy looking clouds. I mean that's what basically it is. The nebula, a nebula is a, a you know a lot of gases uh, in in space. Um, and what we're, we're going to do, we're going to have to create no, a noise section uh, with a, with color ramps that just brings in, you know, has has a lot of uh, different variations of color within that noise. Some of them are, um, un, you know, visible, and some of them aren't. So we just create this sort of depth through the cube itself. Uh, so with the noise section over in here, uh, we we're not going to change any of the any of these parameters as of yet. But we do want to add a mix, um, a mix RGB node, um, and we're going to leave the clamp to well, we're going to leave the factor to zero for now on this one, and I'm going to add a mapping node, and then we need to connect something within the vector. So I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate. Generally, this is what's um, sorry texture coordinate there we go this is what you normally put into here so we want to use the generated not uv or normal or anything like that we're just going to use the generated information uh, leave it to point again don't play with any of these settings but we definitely want to mix between this noise texture and okay i think i know how to do it i think i know how to do it okay so 
He's doing this in Blender, but I know that you could do this, I think, in Unreal as well, in real time. I'm going to try to make some 3D noise. Um... Folder. Just find out this for now. Um, and then we're going to do a new function. Uh, what's the function look like? Let's remember the math for this. You got no oh, fuck it, I didn't do that. You got a point. You got a curve going this way here. And you got a curve going this way here. How do we project them? You take X, Y, and Z, of the point in space in here, and then you take a sample from So we take a sample from, oh, this is, this is so big brain. You could like, you could generate so much like randomness with this. Uh, so you take the Z and Y from here as the X and Y. So noise one. We want the, okay, so position in space. Oh, I can make, oh. <laughs> you could use this for randomization across a huge space to make like clusters of stars, little pockets. Position space. X, Y, Z. This is going to be a fun journey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a second. <laughs> 